family-sized Kia e Nero is the most complete affordable electric vehicle we've seen to date. Key to its appeal is the kind of driving range you'd expect from a much larger full electric car, WLTP rated at 282 miles. Plus it's practical, well equipped and easy to adapt to. There are certainly cheaper EV options in this sector, but we're not sure that there are any better ones. Like most EVs, this one spears away from rest with almost hot hatch style urgency. Though in this case, Kia has engineered in a split second of delay between throttle application and power delivery to make the whole experience feel slightly more combustion-like and linear. 60 miles an hour from rest still only occupies a mere seven and a half seconds though, thanks to a 395 newton meter torque figure generated by the 201 bhp electric motor, every bit of which is delivered to you right from the get-go rather than building as it would with a fossil fuel power plant. It's all mated to a larger capacity battery pack than you'd normally find in an affordable family EV, a 64 kilowatt hour unit that delivers an impressive WLTP rated driving range of two 282 miles that sets a new standard amongst affordable EVs. Conserving that driving range requires careful management of the energy regenerative process that kicks in when you come off the throttle. Like some other EVs, this one provides you with paddle shifters behind the steering wheel that allow you to either intensify or reduce the regenerative braking feel. Alternatively, there's an auto setting that constantly calculates the optimum level of braking regeneration based on the positioning of vehicles ahead. There's also a virtual engine sound system for creating artificial noise to warn those on the pavement of your approach in urban areas. On the open road this car struggles a little bit with weight, it's nearly half a tonne heavier than an equivalently sized combustion engine family hatch, but the even distribution of the battery pack across the floor plan helps with handling and a more advanced independent rear suspension setup has allowed the engineers to deliver a decent quality of ride. As usual with an EV, you get plenty of cabin screen options to allow you to plan your route around your available remaining charge. When it's depleted, you'll be able to recharge your e-Nero to 80% of capacity in just 75 minutes if you can find a 50 kilowatt DC CCS charging point. Most of the time though, you'll be charging this Kia overnight using a 7.2 kilowatt EV supply wall box. You'll have to pay a little extra to get installed in your garage. You can revive the sales from empty in this way in around nine and a half hours, which would use around nine pounds worth of electricity at current rates. If when you're out and about, you're fortunate enough to find a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, you'll be able to recharge the car from empty to 80% of capacity in just an hour and a quarter. In Kia range terms, the Nero's 4.37 meter length positions it somewhere between a focus size seed family hatch and a Qashqai style mid-sized Sportage SUV. The car is nominally an SUV. In this case, Kia prefers the term crossover, hence the chunky stance, the integrated roof rails and muscular wheel arches that house large 17-inch diamond-cut two-tone aluminium rims. Conventional-looking EVs are often compromised in their basic design by the need, in other forms, to accommodate a bulky combustion engine. But all Nero variants feature electrification to some extent, and the priority with this one was to incorporate its bulky battery pack in a way that had as little impact as possible on cabin space. Have the designers managed that? Time to take a look inside. At the wheel, key change lies with the installation of this rotary gear selector dial for the single speed auto gearbox. This frees up this useful extra lidded storage space between heated, powered and leather upholstered front seats that have been redesigned to save space and weight. More subtle differences can be found incorporated into this eight inch center dash infotainment touchscreen, which allows you to locate nearby charging points and set departure times to preheat and pre-cool the cabin. This display also has all the usual connectivity and entertainment features too, of course. So there's navigation, voice control, 
Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring, Bluetooth and an 8-speaker 320-watt JBL premium sound system with a DAB tuner. Plus, you get the full suite of Kia connected services. Most other key functions are covered off by the instrument display you view through the leather-stitched three-spoke steering wheel. This cluster incorporating a mixture of circular LED dials and a central 7-inch LCD screen. Right, time to take a look in the rear. Back seat space is probably the biggest difference between this car and its Hyundai Kona electric cousin, which offers a significantly smaller rear compartment with 90 millimeters less leg space. Perhaps just as significant is the fact that this e-Nero offers slightly more rear passenger room than most more affordable conventional C-segment family SUVs. Kia's mid-sized Sportage crossover, for instance, which may be lengthier externally, but has a wheelbase 30 millimeters is shorter. You'll even fit in three adults back here slightly more easily than would be the case with most similarly sized rival models. That's thanks to the way that the relatively wide 1,805mm body provides 1,402mm of shoulder room. We'll finish with a look at the boot. Swing up the large tailgate and you'll find a very generously proportioned boot that's usefully square in shape and 451 litres in size, which is 69 litres more than you get on the self-charging hybrid variant and a massive 127 litres more than is offered by the PHEV Nero model. That's better than you get from most family hatchbacks and pretty close to the luggage capacity you'd enjoy with a conventionally engined family SUV. Let's make this as clear as it can possibly be. On paper, the e-Nero makes more sense than any other compact family-sized electric car. The only two models that can match this contender's driving range, Hyundai's Kona Electric and Kia's Soul EV, need the same powertrain to do so, but package it in a much smaller body shell that isn't really family-sized. The e-Nero isn't huge inside either, but it'll be big enough for most buyers. Otherwise, the problems here are those that afflict all EVs, a restricted public charging infrastructure, the need for off-street parking, and of course, an ultimate restriction in driving range. The latter issue used to be the killer problem for most would-be EV buyers. Being able in this one to say drive from London to Sunderland without a stop should make a big difference here. But of course, electric vehicle ownership is all about suitability for frequent shorter trips. And in this regard too, an e-Nero is difficult to better. As a result, if Kia could make it more affordable and sell it in greater numbers, we think it could have a huge market impact. As it is though, this car will remain a rare but clever choice amongst family buyers who've really done their homework. And when we look back in a decade's time at EVs that really changed their market, we think this will be one of them.